Just like fall calls for sort of a closet refresh or reboot, it's also a good time to try a new hairstyle. And in today's style file, we are filling you in on a popular trend you're going to be seeing more of this season, bangs. I don't know how I feel about this. Not just any bangs, so-called bottleneck bangs are where it's at right now. So inspired the shape of a bottle they are slimmer towards the roots and fan out toward the brows and stylists say they are ultra flattering not just flattering ultra flattering on the right face shape so today's studio 5 style and beauty contributor megan moore is here to help us figure out who can wear these best yeah. are bangs ever a good idea <laughs> i mean don't we always regret the bang decision eventually mm, don't i we? mean yeah probably <laughs> okay. but they are really fun i like to only recommend them really in the colder weather so that's why this fall trend is really like picking up steam because uh -huh. we're going into cold weather where having bangs or a fringe is a lot more doable it's more relatable, approachable. Yes, in the summer, it's just too hot, right? So bottleneck bangs versus curtain bangs. Yeah. What's the difference? They're really similar. So okay. curtain bangs were really big in the last, like, probably year. And frame the face. They frame the face. And basically, they start at the top. You can see here on the left is a traditional curtain bang. So you have kind of that split. That curtain looks like it's open, like she's coming out on stage, right? And then on the, on the right is more of this bottleneck bang. So you can see the difference is that center has, like, an actual bang. So it's almost like a traditional straight across bang, but uh -huh. only through the center. And then we get the curtain around the eyebrows and the cheekbones. So that's the kind of the difference between the two, although they're really similar and okay. very interchangeable. Some people are looking at those images and saying, hello, Farrah Fawcett from the 70s. Totally. Are we right there? All 70s is back. The big va va boom, big curls, <laughs> bangs, the, the flip, the kind of flipping like outwards is totally back. So yes, yeah. we're seeing 70s hard right now. And kind of geek out from your stylist perspective. What makes a bang, a bottleneck bang, different than like a layer, just a layer that I've cut into my face. Um, they again, very, similar? very similar okay. for sure. I think the bang yeah. aspect, you're gonna write, you're gonna see the length start happening at the cheekbones and anything that's above cheekbones, we're gonna classify as a bang. Okay. If it's below that, it's gonna start to feel much more like a layer. And then how much, how far back are we taking it? That's a big difference Ooh, too. A yeah. layering right here is different than taking from hair all the way back here, whereas we're really gonna be in more of a bang fringe situation there. So it just kind of depends on how much hair you have and how much you want to be the star of the show. I'm suddenly realizing bang is one of those words that if you say it more than three times, it starts to sound funny. I know. And, so, <laughs> and depending on where you are in the world, it's a fringe versus a bang. They're okay. very interchangeable. All right. So let's talk about face shapes. Okay. You mentioned specifically to our producer that certain face shapes, this is good for. Yes. So anytime there's a trend and you're thinking, oh, I kind of like that idea, it's really helped. To, it really helps to know your face shape. And that's crucial because it, it can make or break the haircut, right? So even if you love it, it may not be the best fit for you. So you can see here on the screen, these are our six main face shapes that everybody falls into. I've pulled a celebrity from each one and you can kind of see, oh my gosh, once you start looking, you realize how much variation there is in face shape. It's really amazing. There's not one that's better than the other. There's not one that's more beautiful than the other. Because look at all these amazing, beautiful women, but their faces are totally different shapes, that's right? That's amazing. That's so illustrative to cut them out like that. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool, right? Yeah. So once you kind of know your own face shape, you can determine, all right, what would this haircut do for me, right? Now, if I'm making vertical lines, I'm bringing everything in, I'm elongating it. If I'm making horizontal lines, my eye is going to go outward. It's going to widen this area. If I'm on a diagonal, it's somewhere in between. So depending on my face shape, I may want to narrow, I may want to shorten, I may want to widen, or I may want to kind of Co like curve around the contours, right? Because the goal is what? Balance? Balance. It, and, and if you love, if you don't have any kind of um, qualms about your face shape, then who cares? Whatever. Right? Do whatever you want. Yeah. But if you're one of those people that's like, I have the roundest face, you're like, okay, great. If that bothers you, then we would want a haircut that's going to bring that in a little bit more for you, right? Or if you feel too full here, this is a big area that as we get older, a lot of women feel lower face full, uh -huh. right? If we were to cut that haircut right at the widest pit part of your face, and add more width here, you wouldn't feel like that is a flattering haircut for you. So something longer that can then kind of wrap around it is gonna feel a lot more flattering. So think about the lines that we're creating and visually around your face and decide, 
what's my goal here? Yeah. Do I want to make my face feel fuller and longer this way or this way? Am I really proud of my cheekbones? Do I really want to accentuate them? Because every haircut is gonna have lines that will do that for you. I remember our original Studio 5 style contributor, Holly Stone, this is back in the Capri day. Yes, oh Talk yeah. about 70s. But I'll never forget, she said you want it to hit above or below the widest part of your leg, the hemline of yep. your Capri pant. Totally. And that's what I hear you describe, is just creating that, that balance. And it sounds nuanced, but the illusionary effect is, is really impactful. It is, and it can really make or break a haircut, right? If the, if the line's just a tick off, it can right. make or break it. So if you go into a haircut armed with this knowledge, you know what your face is, then together with your stylist, your team, and you're coming up with an idea together. How do we find out our face shape if we don't know? Okay, so this is the, this is the fun part. So I'm gonna suggest you draw on your face. I mean, I'm just, Sounds that's, fun. How I, that's how I roll, right? Sounds fun. So grab a mirror, and I like an eyeliner because then of course that can just wipe right off, right? Okay. So you're gonna create eight dots on your face. You, you're doing this live? I'm gonna do- Watch out, professional work. I'm gonna work. do part of it, okay? Okay. So our first dot is right at the top center of our forehead. Uh -huh. If you have a widow's peak, it's gonna come down below this dot. Okay. Then we're gonna push our hair all the way back and we're gonna put our next dot at the recession of our hairline. You're so great, Megan. Look at her, taking <laughs> one for our team, for you. Then our dot here is gonna be on the back of our cheekbone, but it has to be what I can still see looking forward. Okay. If I turn my face, then yeah, I could get it all the way back here. But what can I still see straight forward right here? Uh -huh. And then same on my my jawline the furthest back that I can see and then right in my chin okay okay now this is one side so you would do the other side okay. and then you would take it and you're gonna literally connect the dots with straight lines you are the best do we love Megan could we love her any more than when she's sketching a constellation on her face for us I mean it's great right and yes I brought a this is a Jurassic Park mirror because <laughs> that's that's kind of how I roll but once I have my full circle and I'm looking straight on I can really see the lines of my face so I know if my jawline comes out from my cheek then I've got a square or a triangle face if this line um, if I'm looking straight on the camera, mine comes pretty straight down. It doesn't flare out, right? So you are? I'm, I'm more square oval. Square oval. So I drop down here pretty straight. Okay, and, uh -huh. and then my forehead area is more oval. So you can kind of be a blend of two, but it will really give you a great idea when you can visually see it on your face. That is so interesting. Isn't it? We want you to do your homework and let us know. And you say once you've determined that, you can ask those questions. Do I want to widen or shorten? Mm -hmm. Do I want to create a more narrow face? Do I want to lengthen? What's the most common face shape, would you say? Oval and round are the most common for sure. And then kind of a hybrid, there's a lot, you can be, you can be oval with kind of square like I am. So there are some hybrids, but it will really help you to kind of have have that that you know shape when you're going in and say what is it that I want? Do I, am I balanced already? Then I don't need to worry about it. Or do I want, you know, is my forehead more narrow? Do I want to widen that? Yeah. Do I want to narrow it? Like, what, what do am you want to do? Round? You're more round. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You've got pretty equal distance up forehead and right. and through the lower jaw. So, so very no bottleneck veins for me. Well, I mean, if you wanted to, you certainly could. Megan, you're the best. <laughs> this is so interesting Thanks. and so educational at the same time. Thanks. Where can we go if we have more questions? Um, come find me uh, online, thebeautysnoop.com, or on Instagram at beautysnoop. You're just talking normal like there yeah. aren't dots and lines on your face. Totally You're normal. the best. Thank you. <laughs>